Oh no. Was I muted the whole time? Oh boy. That's not good. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this problem right now. We're doing all the even problems on the study guide. Okay. So let me let me just go back. So this Friday we have a um, a quiz or not a quiz a final right one p.m. to two fifty p.m. examity six a.m. to eleven thirty p.m. Uh, no notes allowed. And then if you want to look at the rules, please look at Blackboard about the rules about the final. There's a final review session. It's at eight a.m. this Friday. Um in Jabara 127 and bring your study guide for that. For those of you who are remote, there's a link in Blackboard that I sent out as an announcement that you can join remotely at that time. Okay. Anyways, what I was doing is this, that is not, that can't be possible. So, so this whole thing becomes, so then X is equal to LN of two. Only solution. Okay. Wow. Probably lost like 15 minutes. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay. <clears throat> so next thing. We have is problem 16. And we're going to be solving x plus 9. Or x plus y equals 9, and 2x minus 3y equal to negative 2. I want to solve. All right. So the way I solve this is I get y is equal to x minus 9. Okay. So I'm going to use substitution here. So to have 2x minus 3x minus 9 is equal to negative 2. plus 18 is equal to negative 2, in which case you have negative x is equal to negative 20. So then x is equal to 20. Okay. Oh, oh, silly me. It should be 9 minus x, not x minus 9. I thought I did something wrong. That number is too big. The number is too big to make any sense. That's why. Uh, 9 minus x. So we got 2x minus um, uh, 9 or 18 uh, plus 3x is equal to negative 2. All right, so we have 5x is equal to 16. Uh, 9 minus x, right? Um, quick math. Yep. x is equal to plus that, 16. x is equal to 16 over 3. True. Did I write this problem down wrong? Y is equal to 9 minus X. Oh, that's 27. What am I doing? <laughs> I can't multiply today. This is 27. That's why. Okay. We have 5x is equal to 25. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. x is equal to 5. All right. So then 5 plus y equals 9. So then y is equal to 4. All right. So then our solution set is a 5, 4. Okay. Next problem, we have 18. 
we have log 2 of 4x squared, square root of y, over z cubed. Okay. Expand. Do we want to expand this? All right. So first and foremost, we have a division sign above everything or, or you know, with everything. So then this becomes log 2 of uh, 4x squared square root of y minus log 2 of z cubed, right? And then over here, we have a multiplication, okay? So this is equal to <clears throat> log 2 of 4x squared plus log 2 of square root of y, all right? Minus log 2 of z cubed. Oh, this is the same thing as saying 1 half, right? So then, this over here, you can expand it further. Okay? So this is log 2 of 4 plus log x squared, 2 of x squared, plus log um, y of 1 half, minus log 2 of z cubed. Log 2 of 4 is 2. Okay? And I, I can bring down the 2, I can bring down the half, I can bring down the 3 over here, right? So this becomes 2 log of x uh, plus a half log of y plus 3 log of z. Okay? Or minus I should say. Okay? So next is problem 20. So we have fx is equal to x to the 4 minus 7x cubed plus 12x squared plus 4x minus 16. And we are given that one of the zeros is 2. And we want to find all of the zeros. So to do that, um, I want to divide this out first, right? So 2, over here we have 1, negative 7, 12, um, 12, 4, negative 16. Right. You bring this down to um, this is becomes negative five, negative ten, this is two, four, and then this becomes eight, this becomes sixteen. Add this zero, right? So then what you can do is um Next thing you do is you can find the list of all the other possible zeros, right? So remember how we have a 0 over um, a n, right? Our uh, coefficients, right? So this time we have um, all the, uh, or sh I should say, factors of a 0 over factors of a n, right? Or factors of uh, 16 plus or minus 8 plus or minus 2 plus or minus 1 plus or minus uh, 4 right? Or plus or minus 16 plus or minus 4, right? So then this is over factors of 1 which is plus or minus 1. Okay? So there's that. <clears throat> oh, oh, what am I doing? It should be this, this one right here. It should be this. This is x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x plus 8, right? So all the factors of 8, 4, plus or minus 2, 
plus or minus 1, and plus or minus 8 all over plus or minus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test 2, okay? So test 2. 4 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2. 8. All possible rational zeros, okay? So I'm going to test 2. So I have, you know, 2 right here, 1, negative 5, 2, 8, like that. 1, 2, negative 3, negative 6, uh, negative 4, negative 8. Oh, look, this one works as well. Okay, so x equals 2 is another factor, right? So now we have x minus 2 squared, and over here we have x squared minus 3x minus 4. That should be very easy to factor, right? This becomes x minus 2 squared, <clears throat> okay? And this is x uh, minus 4, x plus 3, or x plus 1, I should say. And this is equal to 0. So then we have x equals 2, 4, and negative 1. Okay. Okay, 22. 22. Okay. We want 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus x plus 7. And we're dividing it by... Uh, x minus 2. So we can use synthetic division, right? So x minus 2 is, uh, you know, x minus c, right? Plus 2. So then we can use synthetic division for this. All right. So we have 4, negative 3, 1, and 7. And we have 2 right there. Right? 4 right here. 8, 5, um, 2 times 5 is 10, 11, 22, and that is 7 times 22, is, or plus 22 is 29, all right? So then this is, uh, this is x squared plus 5x plus 11 plus 29 over x minus 2, Okay. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit faster now. I want to simplify 81 x9 y4. Well, this is equal to square root of 81, right? Times square root of x to the 9 <clears throat> times square root of y to the 4. Okay? So what this becomes is that, well, square root of 81 is um, 9, right? Um, you can't do square root of, uh, or square root of x to the 9. So what you can do is square root of x to the 8, square root of x, right? And then that is y squared right there. Okay, so then you can do this. So then you have 9. Um, we have x to the 4, y squared, and we have square root of x. Okay. All right. So next is 26. And we want to subtract. We have x. x squared minus 1. We have 3, x squared minus 4, or plus 4x minus 5. Okay? So what we have here is that um, x over, this is x minus 1, x plus 1, right? 
want to factor first because we want to we don't want to multiply by really big numbers right and then the bottom is um x minus one x plus five right So then the only thing this side is missing is x plus 1. And then the only side thing this side is missing is x plus 5. So this becomes 3x plus 1. Or I should say, I should do the other side first, right? Because we're subtracting. We have x times x plus 5 over here, right? And we are subtracting it with 3x plus 1, because this side is missing at x plus 1. And then this bottom becomes x minus 1, x plus 1, x plus 5. Okay? So then we get over here, we have x squared plus 5x minus 3x minus 3 over, you know, x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 5, this is equal to, well, this is x squared plus 5x minus 3, or I should say plus 2x minus 3, all over x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 5. You can factor the top again, so this is x plus 3 x minus 1, right? That's how you factor that. And then the bottom is x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 5, okay? So x plus minus 1, x minus 1 over here. So then finally, whew, this problem is a bit long, x plus 1, x plus 5. And I don't think you can do it any more further. So there you go. It was a long problem. 28. Problem 28 is we have to find the x and y intercept. Of x cubed minus 3x squared. 4x plus 12. So for y int, it's pretty simple, right? x is equal to 0, right? So just plug in x equals 0, right? Um, and if you plug in x equals 0, you have 0 cubed minus 3 times 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 12 well, this is just this cancels, this cancels, this cancels. This becomes twelve, okay. So the y int is uh, zero twelve, okay. For x int, it's a little bit more complicated, or I should say, f of x is equal to zero, right? So then we get that x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 12 is equal to 0. So now we have to factor it, right? We're just finding the 0 of this polynomial at this point. Okay? So I, you can actually factor this, right? So if you take out an x squared over here, this becomes x minus 3. And if you take out a negative 4 over here, this becomes x minus 3 as well. Okay, so this becomes x squared minus 4, x minus 3, right? So this is x minus 2, x plus 2, x minus 3, 0. So then you're, uh, you have x equals 2, negative 2, and 3. So then your y-intercepts are... Two zero. Uh, three zero and negative two zero. Okay. 
That's your solution for that. Problem 30. If you want to evaluate sigma k equals 1 to 3 k squared plus k minus 1. All right, so this is uh, what we talked about recently, right? All we have to do, what this means is that we have to add from 1 to 3, right? Add from k equals 1 to k equals 3. So let's do it. So k equals 1, k equals 2, 3. And just plug in, right? k equals 1. This becomes 1 squared plus 1 minus 1, right? This becomes 1. This becomes 2 squared plus 2 minus 1. This is 4 plus 2 is 6. This is 5. This is 3 squared plus 2 minus 1. This is 9 plus 1 is 11. This is 10. Okay? So then add that all together. So it's plus, plus, okay, 1 plus 5 plus 10 is equal to 16. All right? Pretty straightforward. Okay. 32. Okay, for 32, I think I'm just going to do A and D. Yeah, A and D. Okay. So we have f of x is equal to, and we have g of x is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 4. Okay, I'm just going to do A, uh, f plus g of x, and then I'm going to do b, f compose g of x. Okay? <clears throat> so what is f plus g of x? It's just f of x minus g of x, right? Straightforward. So we have 2x minus 5 minus x squared plus 3x plus 4. Okay? Okay? So then, this is um, this becomes, let's say, five. Let's start with negative then. So this becomes negative x squared plus five x minus one. Okay. Straightforward. Okay. This is equal to f of g of x. Okay. Then this becomes, so you just plug in uh, g of x for x, so this is 2, x uh, squared minus 3x plus 4 minus 5 over here. We have 2x squared minus 6x plus 8 minus 5, right? This from 2x squared minus 6x plus 3, okay? Next up, we have problem 34. All right, we want to sketch a graph of um, negative x minus 3 minus 2, okay? So first and foremost, we want to sketch, uh, well, let's say we have x, and then we have y is equal to absolute value of x, and then over here we have y is equal to negative x minus 3 minus 2. We should also do, you know, x minus or x plus three, right? Yeah. Uh, we have our new, we should say, new coordinates. So over here we have that uh, x move right. 3, down 1, or down 2, and flip y axis, right? Okay? So then this becomes new x 
new y. Okay. So x and y, this is plug in negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. This is two, one, zero, one, two, right? It's absolute value. It's quite simple. Right. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so new x. Uh, well, we're adding 3 because we're moving right. So this negative 2 plus 3 is equal to 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is equal to the 2. 0 plus 3 equals 3. 1 plus 3 equals 4. And then 2 plus 3 equals 5. We have new y. We're saying that we are moving down 2, right? And we're multiplying by negative. So... 2 times negative 2, or negative 1, and we're subtracting 2 from that, this becomes negative 4. We have 1 times negative 1 minus 2, negative 3, okay, 0 times negative 1 minus 2, negative 2. 1 times negative 1 minus 2 is equal to negative 3. And over here we have 2 times negative 2, Minus 2 is equal to negative 4. So our new coordinates are 1, negative 4, 2, negative 3, so on and so forth. Okay. So we're going to graph this. We have... Something like... This, right? So we have 1, negative 4. You have 2, negative 3. You have 3, negative 2. And then we have this over here. And then we just have our straight lines, right? Or if they're actually good straight lines... I actually drew the graph correctly, but yeah, so it's like that. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> so that's that. This is problem 34. Let's do 36. Thirty-six. And we're going to find inverse of y is equal to e to the x. Well, you know, this is a bit complicated, or not really complicated, actually. y equal to the x. So to find inverse, we have to flip x and y, right? And then all we have to do is find, or get, find y, right? So what we do is find the natural log. So e to the y equals x. So then we natural log both sides. Because that's the uh, inverse of e to the x. So y is equal to natural log of x. Or, yeah, or f negative 1 of x is equal to ln of x. Okay? That one's pretty simple. 38, we want to determine whether or not, um, I'm going to do two of them, okay, are these functions one on one, okay, first off we have um, x squared minus 2, okay, and then b we have x minus 3. Okay. Okay. So let's say x1 equals x2, right? So then we have f of x1 equals f of x2, right? So we have x1, x1 squared minus 2 is equal to x2 squared minus 2. Should say f of x, right? G of x, okay. So then, if you add 2 to both sides, you get that x1 squared is equal to 
x2 squared. So then let's say you find the square root of this, right? Then you get x1 is equal to plus or minus x2, right? So that means that x1 could equal, so x1 is equal to x1 or x1 is equal to negative x2, right? Which is not good, right? So that's bad. So f of x is not 1 to 1. Over here is more straightforward. f of x1 equals f of x2. So you have x1 minus 3 is equal to x2 minus 3. Or I should, this should be g of x, right? Uh, then you add 3 to both sides. This means that x1 equals x2. So you're good. Okay, so g of x is 1 to 1. Okay, so then 48, 40, I mean, 40, okay, so you have the sequence A, N, so you go to 1, 2, 3, Four, okay, and then you want to do sum of twenty terms, okay. So if you remember, uh, well, this is obviously a uh, arithmetic function, right? Notice a n is arithmetic, right? And d equals one because. That's pretty straightforward because you're only going by one each time, right? So we have something like a n is equal to one, or yeah, and a one is equal to one, right? Plus n minus one, right? And s n s of twenty, well. So then a of uh, 20 is equal to 1 plus 19 minus 1, okay? Or 20 minus 1, I should say. I don't know why I put 19 there. Is equal to 19 or 20. What am I doing? Put 20, okay? So then s of 20 or s of n is equal to... Um, a, n, and then a, n plus a1 over 2. Okay? 20, 20 plus 1 over 2. Okay? And this is 210. All right? 42. So x varies directly with y. Okay. So then y equals 10 implies that x is equal to 30. And then we want to solve what is y when x equals negative 7. Okay? So this problem is pretty straightforward. You have y is equal to kx, right? Is our um, direct very formula. Okay? And then we plug in values. So we have 10 is equal to k times 30. Implies that k is equal to one third, right? Okay, so we have our equation y is equal to one third x. So then plug in x equals negative seven. We get that y is equal to one third negative seven. 
is equal to negative 7 over 3. Okay? Again, very simple. Okay, so now, finally, we're going to do 44. And for 44, I think I'm going to copy the problem from, let's see, just content. Yeah, I was looking at the, yeah. Let's say login, come on. Come on, log in. There you go. Course materials. Study guide. I'm just going to take the pictures directly from. So these two pictures, right? We have this picture. All right, done. Save the photos. And then we have this picture. Over here. Done. Save the photos. So now, insert these images. It's way too big. Okay. Do this second. Um, and then the other one is this. Okay. Whoa, big. All right, so what I want to do is find the graph of this, or find equation. Graphs, okay. So for this one, this is a parabola, right? And it looks like a normal parabola of, uh, you know, x equals 1, right? Or a equals 1. So notice how it's moving... Two units left, so it's moved two units right, I should say, and three units down. Okay, and our normal formula for a parabola, right, is fx is equal to a x minus k squared plus L, right? Or I should say, just, let's, let's just use A and B, okay? So in this case, A is equal to 2, B is equal to negative 3, and A is equal to 1 because, well, this is 1, this is just a normal parabola, right? You're going up uh, pretty normally. You're going up from 1 to 3 to 5, Okay, so then this becomes y, or I should say, this becomes f of x is equal to x minus 2 squared minus 3. All right, and that's how we got that answer. So it's just a translated, uh, translated function, right? Over here, we have this line, right? And we have that the y-intercept is uh so y int equals negative one right and we have that um the slope okay so let's go down so uh find a point where it's actually meeting i'm pretty sure that's the point right so we're going over one two three four five and we're going down one two three so we're going uh Right, five, down, three, right? So we have five over negative three equals m, okay? All right, so now I'm just going to make it negative five-thirds. We can just put this all together using our slope-intercept form. So y equals mx plus b, right? This is equal to b. So now we have that y is equal to negative 5 over 3x minus 1. Okay? And, yeah, that's... That's your solution.
Okay. So. That's that. <clears throat> I've done all the uh, even numbers. And since no one's here, I don't, I don't imagine there's any questions. So I think that's it for today. Good luck on your final. All right? I have no idea what's on your final, actually. Um, but I'm certain that uh, a lot of the problem on the final is going to be very similar to everything we just did, everything on that study guide. Okay? Yeah. Um, and yeah, good luck. I'll see you guys, or some of you guys, on um, this Saturday at 1 p.m. All right. Bye.